Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Pam Turner, and I'll be the moderator for this morning's lecture. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. The Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. 
In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have class dedicated in prayer this morning by Dr. Janet Franklin. We'll be doing a musical selection to the choir, Tampa Choir. Our scripture reading will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. And what's the scripture? Um, Colossians, the second chapter. Okay. Morning, class. Good morning. Let us bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahweh for bringing us once again together in one spirit, in one truth, in one faith. Let us listen to the speakers and be edified this morning. Thank Yahweh through His Son. Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say, Hallelujah. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Colossians, the second chapter. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of Yahweh, the Father, and the Messiah in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in the Messiah. As ye have therefore received Yahshua the Messiah our Savior, so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the Messiah. 
For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the Messiah, buried with him by immersion, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Yahweh, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no one condemn you regarding sacrificial meal and drink offerings made on the holy days, new moons, and Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is the Messiah. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility, in worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of Elohim. Wherefore, if ye be dead with the Messiah from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all, are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, which have no value except to the satisfying of the flesh. That was Colossians, the second chapter. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome our uh, visiting brethren once again from the Hamilton branch, Hamilton, Canada, Mm -hmm. um, Ontario, sorry. (laughs) Um, Dr. Lionel, I will not try to say your last name. There you go. Thank you. I would like to call up our first, I'd like to call up our first speaker, Dr. Darlene Webster. Good morning, class. I was listening to the Colossians, which is a very, 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 was very edifying this this morning. And I want to um, just to, and and I thought about, I thought about the children of 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 Israel, Israel, and when they were so disobedient and if you could please um, get me in um, in um, Exodus please where the children I want to start with the children of Israel Israel when before they came up out of the um, land of Egypt when they were here captive and of um, the Pharaoh, and how they how they were suffering there. Please, in Exodus. Exodus. Yes, dear. Um, where he says, "I've seen their affliction; I've heard their cries." Yes, please. Okay, three and um, seven. 
And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster, taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Is that what you want? Yes. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. <coughs> and also where, while they were here in this um, captive under Pharaoh, how even after um, the plagues were, were issued out on, the, um, on Pharaoh, that what Pharaoh did is that he um, tripled their um, the uh, the the work onto wow. the um, yes. onto the um, Egyptians, mm -hmm. and so they had to work harder. Exodus one and eight. Yes. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come. On, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out another war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against them. Right. right. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. I don't think that's what you wanted. No, it, what it, it was is that when, um, when these, uh, the plagues was, uh, were, were issued out on, on, on Pharaoh, then what he did is that he, took, he did take it out on the children of Israel. And he made them even work harder than than what than the way that they were working. Yeah. So they were in this bondage um, in every manifestation that you could possibly uh, imagine, um, spiritually, physically, in every um, way that that you can even think of. They weren't allowed to um, to to even even in anything that they believed. They had to let go of everything. And just um, do whatever Pharaoh just they were they were just slaves here, and in the in this in the, the really steeped into this uh, this bondage and this terrible state. So uh, every last one of them, even the, the even the women, were had had to suffer because of of this of the situation here, and then um, Yahweh did you know send to Moses to. Um, he he asked Moses to go to um, down into into Egypt, and if you could if you if you could get me that that cherry, please. Exodus three and one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb, and the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Um, I don't think. Go it's, it's and after gather that. the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, or this is further along than this. Okay, it's, a le it's 10. Okay. Exodus 3 and 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest right. bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Okay. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth right. the children of Israel out of Egypt? And yeah, thank you, Sherry. Because Moses really felt incompetent. He felt as though that he did not speak well, he did not have it in him. To um, to even do this, so he was re reluctant to, to to. He wasn't really really reluctant. I'm not going to say that because Moses was obedient un unto um, Yahweh, so he knew that he was going to um, to do what Yahweh t told him to do. But he also felt within himself, how can I do this 
when I can I, I can't even you know I stutter and I have a problem with um, with speaking to people and then he's going to have to stand up before Pharaoh who was um, a great and mighty person at the time and could have been killed and um, immediately but he still had to be obedient unto unto Yahweh and what he was told to to do so Moses did go down and into um, um, Egypt, and he did do what Yahweh told him to do. So, also, if you could get me how they 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 did come up out of of Egypt, and they had to before coming out, they were told that they had to um, yes, they had to take out a lamb, And they had to um, place the the uh, the blood at the um, on the on the doorposts, at the at the top and the bottom of the of the door and the and the two side side posts of the door. Exodus twelve and one. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls, according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it, keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two poles, side posts, and on the upper doorposts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. That's, they shall eat that's the flesh. Good. That, that's good, um, Janet. Thank you. Yes, okay. And, and also what, what Janet was saying was that, okay, that, that lamb had to be without spot and blemish. Mm -hmm. Now that's uh, uh, typifying that that is Yahweh. It is Yahweh that, uh, that is without spot and, and blemish. Mm -hmm. We are not without spot and blemish. But Yahweh is, and it was, and this is what this was Pharaoh's worst um, nightmare because he was afraid that the people of, that the children of Israel would um, come together and and unite, which it which was which it was saying in uh, in in Colossians, which is in the in the um, scripture that was read um, this this morning. So he was a fearful of that that they would unite and come together. Um, as as and, and be a forceful um, a forceful body, and that's what um, Pharaoh did did not want. But regardless as to what that devil wants, um, Yahweh is going to uh, only allow just a certain amount of whatever the situation is to even happen, and that's what he did did here with the um, children of of Israel and with Pharaoh. Pharaoh wasn't going to get, but just just as far as he did get with this um, situation here, but he thought that nothing and no one and no power was going to come before him. But he, he, had, he realized that yes, that will happen, just like we have to realize that concerning our own personal issues and situations that we're dealing with in, in this world right now. This is just a, just a, a, a template of, 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 our, of our lives now. That, that's what it is, because we can find ourselves on these, on these charts. So the children of Israel, Israel did come together, and they did unite, and they did come on up, on up out of, of, that, of that bondage, which was, which was you know, horrific. And they, and they came, up, up, um, came on up out of there, and they did, um, after that, uh, that night of them, of them being told to, to be ready, and for for that for that next um, morning to be ready, so they had to be ready. So they had to have that lamb in them, which means they had to have Yahshua in them. They had to have him in, in him in them. This is spiritually now. So when so be, be and and after they they did partake of that lamb, 
then they they had to also be be ready to come on up out of there at the at the time that Yahweh said you're going to move on at this particular time you're going to come on up out of this of this situation of this bondage. So they did, and they crossed across the Red Sea on dry shrot, and they did cross cross on over. So when they came on on across. Well, Yahweh caused uh, uh, the, the, the sea to, um, uh, well, uh, Pharaoh um, decided after the people had come on out that he wasn't going to allow that because, you know, that was, that was just something that his, his own vanity and his arrogance could not take. He was like, okay, well, I, I don't want to go along with this. No matter what the plagues that Yahweh had already issued out upon him and, and his people, he still went on after them, whether he had to die in reference to it or not. He, he was just, I mean, that old devil is just that, that darn determined that he's going to have his way. So when, when they did come on, come on about on dry shrot, Pharaoh said, okay, I don't want to go along with this. He changed his mind. And he came on up behind them with, with his men and the chariots and, and the horses and all of that and after, after these, these people. And so, and, and Yahweh caused the, the water to just rise up over them and bury them, which is a, a burial right there. It's a, it's a burial because all of, the, all of them, Pharaoh and his men, were buried right there. They all drowned. And they, so after the children of Israel did get over, over here into the wilderness of Sinai, they were so happy and so relieved that they had that they had been delivered and they had resurrected out of this death-like state, which is what it was. It was a death, um, being here under this bondage. So they came on up uh, out of there into the um, wilderness of Sinai, and they um, and they camped. They 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 did camp here. So Moses and if you can get get me, please, where. Moses and, 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 the, um, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders, after they had come out, and they, 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 they came out and they celebrated and they were so happy to, and relieved that they had been rescued out of, out of that state and, and condition. So then Moses, um, being obedient unto Yahweh, no, he he was he was told that he to 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 for for, for him to take Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu and the seventy elders of Israel, and they and they, and they camped out on the back of Mount Sinai, here, and Moses asked told um, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu and the seventy elders to tarry here, until until he gets back, because um, he was going up to um, to. To up, up the um, up to the the backside of, of Mount Sinai. If you could get me here, where um, where Moses when he started out, Sherry with the um, yeah. with going up. To Exodus twenty four. Okay. It's, yes. I'm, okay. I'm just gonna grab um, the first verse. Okay. It's twenty four. One, yeah. two, nine, eighteen. Okay. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up. Jump down. Um, then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, when, when you, when, right there, when they saw um, Elohim, and, and, and in, that, in, that, in that state, that was Moses and Joshua. Who was Yahshua? Who they were the only two that went up to um, to re, to 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 get this vision that was basically a vision that they had right with, within them themselves to see this, and Yahweh opened it up a panoramic this panoramic vision, 
and showed um, Moses the the whole creation um, from the from the start all the way through and to um, all the way through it's, and he and wrote, and and also to, um, let and, and showed him what he wanted him to um, hewn onto the um, the um, tablets of stone, and he instructed him exactly what to uh, to put on the tablets of stone, um, which one of of the um, of the commandments to um, hewn onto this uh, this um, stone. So Moses was there, and it, in, in reference to this, this vision, him and, and Joshua, which was Joshua here, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders were supposed to be obedient and stay right here, and tarry right here, just like Moses asked them to do. But instead of them staying right here, they became tired because Moses was there longer than they thought that he would, that, that he would be up on the, on the mount. So they became tired um, from waiting, and they went back down to the, um, with the children, um, the, uh, back down to the um, wilderness of Sinai with the children of Israel. So they went back down, and that's when they went on, and um, they were also given instructions as to exactly what to do to take part in um, collecting the, uh, the, the gold from the different um, camps sites that were here, here um, in this um, wilderness of Sinai. So they did uh, do this and they did take part in it and to collecting all of this gold and, and built this um, and, and melted it all down to, to, um, into this uh, golden calf. They melted all the gold down to make this, um, this graven in, um, image with this uh, golden calf here. So the, it, they did not want to wait, they wanted to have something right then and there so that they could could uh, worship right then and there that's like they could not could not wait for it for um for moses to return so when moses did re return with the um with this um stone with the uh, commandments on it he he waxed hot because he was very upset with them because he asked the um, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu and the seventy elders to to stay there and tarry. First of all, they they were not there; they were gone on back down to the um to to the campsite, mm -hmm. and um, so he he waxed hot and he did break this uh, this uh, first um, table of stone. So he did go back. He, well, w once he did that, he and he really he really was very upset with the children of Israel because they were doing everything that they wanted to do in in, in on in this camp right here. They were doing whatever they want. They were just just uh, just anything that they wanted to do that they were actually doing it there in, in this camp and they were just are totally out of control because they had nothing and even with this golden calf they were still lost there wasn't any salvation in the in this so they were still uh, were, were totally did disobedient and um so then Moses tear goes back up to the um, to into the mount the uh, second time, and if someone could could get that for me, please. And also the uh, the scripture lesson this this morning, where in in Colossians where it was saying that the um, uncircumcised and the it's it's I don't know exactly which which one where the. Um, do you want that first? Yes, please. Colossians 2 and 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Right. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the Messiah. Right. Well, see, they had not got, they were not at that, at that point of where they were circumcised, um, a circumcision that is made without hands. They were still thinking physical, so they were here um, uh, participating in all types of physical um, um, pleasures that they and and they they were caught up in in that instead of them being um, satisfied with just the mere fact that they had come out of this terrible state 
of being um, in this bondage and suffering for so many years, then they get here and they and they complain and they start um, just um, complaining um, that it's not an, it's not this, it's not that. They're they're dissatisfied. They don't have this. They don't have that. And so they they feel as though that they need something. That's the reason why they got into this uh, golden calf and they started with this. But it's no it's, it was it did not do anything for them. So they are still lost. So what they, they need is for Yahweh himself to, to um, give them what, what, they, what they actually need. They didn't realize really that they, you know, he had to um, give them what they need. And that is the circumcision that is made without hands. It has nothing to do with the physical at all. It is spiritual. And... With that, I'm going to just say hallelujah and hallelujah. relinquish the floor. Hallelujah. Thank you. And our next speaker will be Dr. Lee Dora Nicholas. class. It's always a pleasure to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father in truth. You know, we are truly blessed. The state and condition of the world and the people, and the, and the state and condition of people's mind, you know, we, it's something that we have to deal with on a daily basis, you know. It, you know, I used to love to wake up, you know, and greet people, but not no more. <laughs> you know, yeah. Very exhausting, you know what I mean. People can be, you know what I mean, because you know if it, if it's it's one spirit. I don't know where to get all this here. Two spirit in the body. It's only one spirit. It's two manifestations, but it's one spirit, you know. And if it's not righteous, what else can it be? You know, it's only two. You know, it's one spirit. And two manifestations. So you can't be both of them. You'll be a loony toony. That's why they're running around here crazy. You know what I mean? Because they think they got they doing good and then they're doing bad. One minute you're doing good, one minute you're doing bad. And, and Yahweh do not work like that. You know what I mean? It's it's it, it's not like that, you know. It's not like that, you know, and it's a daily struggle with people that don't know. You say they're ignorant and they look at you like you, you're cursing them or something like that. Look up the word. It's just a me that you don't know. You know, it, it, it's not a bad word. You don't know, you're ignorant. You don't know. If you don't know, it, would you like to know? Yes. That's the thing about it. Would you like to know? That's how we learn. You, you, from a babe, that's where we come from, you know. The law and the prophet, the breath, the food, the milk. The nourishment, you know, you, a kid just don't grow up without some kind of preparation that he have to go through. And it's a circumcision too with that. You know, it's steps. You can't get away from it. A threefold makeup, you can't get away from it. You know, we come in the same way, blood, water, spirit. You, you, you can't get away. It's it. You know, you can't get away from it, but it's it just... It to be so bad that people cannot see this here, and then they take everything and put it on them. Who are you going to give credit for you being born? Your existence. Mom and dad, okay, pass it on down. Who was who responsible for them? Mom and dad, okay, keep passing it on down. It's, it's a repeat. It don't stop. It don't stop. The end is declared right from the beginning, but people cannot realize that. Colossians is a great chapter also, you know what I mean? It tells you, know, you cannot do nothing without that circumcision. You can't. There's no way that you can. 
even get around anything that you do without a circumcision. You have to, your mind has to be changed on a lot of things. We all had this concept coming in that, uh, you know, like they say, God is good, God is spirit, God is love, you know, but they can't explain that to you. You know, I was duped with that so long in the church world to, you know, when, when I heard the teaching for the first time, I was blown away. It did, uh, it, that killed everything that the church people had even told me, what my pastor had even told me, you know. And then he did a lot of lying too because I seen a lot of things that he was doing. You know, one minute a day, you're good when you're in church. Then when you leave church, it's hell. You know, and they don't understand that. You know, they run and do everything. You know, I just couldn't understand that part, you know. Even my mother, how holy she was. How could you come to go to church and then run right in the, in the ballroom right after that? You know what I mean? You know, that's what they used to do, you know. And I used to say, what is this? Huh? Yeah. You know, I mean in the church ball and all out and everything, but I mean a diehard Christian. I mean, we was in church 24-7 all day long. I got, I got so tired of dealing <laughs> all that, you know. And I said, I say, well, in y'all, five minutes later after y'all leave church, Y'all run straight to the bar room. What? What is that? You're not even chewing on it. You're not, girt, you know, bringing it down, you know, eating it bring, and bringing it back up. You're not thinking about what he, what he said. Oh, what he said ain't no good. You know, so, you know, that was very confusing to me. You know what I mean? Very, you know. So when, 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 when Yahweh gave that invitation to me, I said, Father, I need something. Some, some kind, some substance, some kind of stability, you know, to stand on, you know. I, I believed in God, yeah, you know. I know it was something animating in these bodies, you know, in my body, but not knowing what it was, you know, until coming to class and that circumcision just blew me away. Right from the beginning, he started cutting all that carnality and all that carnal stuff that they were feeding me in there, asking me for my money, and I always used to say, why God want my money? You know, if God everything, why he need my little change? It wasn't going to do him no good because I didn't have that much to give him. You know what I mean? And I feel as though my potato chips and pickles was what I wanted to get. You know what I mean? With my little money, so, you know, that's what I took it for. You know what I mean? You know, and, you know, and they used to say, you don't put nothing in church, you're going to hell. I said to myself, I was already in that state, in condition. I was already in hell. How brother I could get in hell? You know what I mean? I was already in it with all the chaos going on, you know. You know, and my mother said, why would you think you in hell? I said, Ma, all this here going on around. I see all the things that the pastor do, that he preach on a pulpit, that he said is righteous. But yet still, I see him going to somebody's house, you know, that he's supposed to be at. What is that? You know what I mean? Why is, why is you listening to all this here? So when I stopped going, it, it was just like... You know, she was so disappointed in me when I stopped going to church. I said, well, bless your soul, you know, but I got to get away from here. You know what I mean? I was at an age where I could, I, I made that move. You know what I mean? So when I went into class for the first time and I, and, and I seen these names, I said, huh? And then when they said, no J, no Jesus. I would hurry up and went and find me a dictionary. Like I said, I had one of the old Bibles that, I mean, Grandma used to write in. Put everything in it, birthdays, anniversary, all kind of stuff in it. I still have the Bible. I mean, got all kind of stuff. It fell apart, I didn't glued it, I didn't taped it, you know, but I won't destroy it because it, 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 it's, it's a tool. It's it, not a really a tool, but it's... Yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? It, it, it just, it, it, it reflects back to where I was at, to where Yahweh has brought me now. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, it's a good, it's good. You know what I mean? So I, I say, you know, and I seen that name. <laughs> I seen his name and I ain't paid no attention to it. I said, huh? You know? And then all the other mistranslation of the name, you know what I mean? Yahoo, Yashu, and all that. I said, okay. So I asked, I asked Reb about it. Reb told me, like everybody else said, the pastor told him, you know, it's a great mystery. Why? 
if God is spirit, and that's not his name, and, and, and you know, and then found out that, you know, not knowing about the J, if God is spirit, why can't I know something? Why always you got to die before you know something? That's a, well, if I'm dead, how am I going to, how am, how am I learning anything if I'm dead? You know, you know, what am I learning if I'm dead? I, okay, I got to die to know something about him. But I can't know nothing about him whilst I'm living. That don't make no sense. That, that, you know, that really didn't make no sense to me, you know. So it was a, it's, it was a conflict when, we, when I did make that transition from, from the church to class, you know what I mean? So, so not, and, and, and it, it, it just weighed on the family too, you know what I mean? I'm going one direction, everybody else going to church. And then they're trying to get me to go to church, you know, and then I'm trying to tell this teaching to them what Yahweh has given me, you know what I mean? But they still didn't understand it. So, you know, I said, well, you know what, Yahweh, you know, I didn't got the blood off my head, you know, I, you know, because I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't gave it to them. I didn't gave them all that you have given me, I, the understanding of whatever, you know what I mean? What little you have given me, I gave it to them, you know what I mean? So, you know what, now, they stick on the tradition as if they say that, no, we're not going to. Go that way. We know the true name, but we're not going to go that way. Okay. I am very adamant about my name. You know, when people, you know, try to pronounce my name, you know, I say, come on now. Lee Dor, not law. L-A is law. Lee, L-E. You know what I mean? Please, you know, you know, and I get some attitude. So I could imagine about the creator very much. You know, Nicholas. They real mispronounce and spell that name. You know, I had to give a check back because they, they took one letter out of my name. When I, and I didn't pay no attention to it. I seen Lee Dora, that was good enough. And I seen the numbers on the check. So I bought it to the bank and the bank said, no way. I said, huh? What you mean no way? And this, this check came from, 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 wait a minute, where it came from? Nevada. It came from Nevada. I said, huh? They said, this check ain't, you, you can't. This this is this don't go with your ID. I said, yeah, it is. That's me. The latest thing. Check the last part out. N I C H L O S L A S or something like that. I said, Whoa. I had to send all the check all the way back to Las Vegas. I had to tell. Her, I said, baby, you need to send me another check. You know what I mean? And put the right one on there. You know that right name on there. That is important. Your name is important. And the Creator wants you to know Him in spirit and in truth, and He wants you to know His name. You cannot breathe nothing else. You know, I tried it. It went to carpet. <laughs> I tried it. You know, you know, you know, you know, being, you know, silly and everything. I tried it. You know, God <laughs> went to carpet and got choked up. You know what I mean? You can't breathe God. I have no way you can breathe God. You know what I mean? And I say, well, you know what? That's true. You know, you prove everything. Through you. Yahweh has given us the witness through us. You know what I mean? You know, and the things that I have been through, you know, my story is always the same. You know what I mean? All that Yahweh has shown me, he always, I don't care what I think about. He said, girl, I've told you where you was at. You was in Egypt in bondage in New Orleans. May I, may I, may I remind you again? You know, you crossed that water. In New Orleans, may I remind you again? You know, blood, water. You know, who gave you that light, that spirit, that everlasting light? You know, I said, you know what? Yes, you did. You know what I mean? Who brought you through that? You know, I felt that 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 darkness. I mean, you couldn't put your hand in front of you. You put it in there, yeah, but you couldn't see it. You know what I mean? I felt that. You know what I mean? So, I have no doubt about. What Yahweh has given me, you know, and I have something to stand on, regardless of what anyone else may think or uh, even say, you know, my thoughts are not mine, and, and nor anyone else when it comes down to my salvation, you know what I mean? So, you know, we've been, I said, I've been duped long enough. For all the years of my life, I mean, I knew that Bible from front to back. I could quote it. We used to stand in front of the church and quote it. It didn't do me a bit of good. Not nothing for my soul. Nothing. 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 You know what I mean? So we I'm just saying this, you know, because it, it you know, Yahweh 
at every beginning of every chapter, he always tried to admonish and get forth. He always got a conflict with the inhabitants of the earth. And it's still going on. It, it's still going on. We just got to know what dispensation ages that we are in. Because it's still going on. He had a conflict with them back then. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. And, and they still, they got it now. And they just twisted the things around now. They're taking everything that they thought they knew and they're putting it on themselves. He said his glory he would not give to anyone but him. So why are they trying to take it? You can't give. Man been duking up for a long time. Why you want to give him anything else to mess up? That's why on the sixth day, that's why he was put there on the sixth day because he, he already knew that he was going to try to tell, try to capture everything for himself. And it wasn't going to do no good. Man wants to stay ahead of everything. Nobody wants to give credit to nobody. I was talking to a lady out there, and everything come out of my mouth. Me, 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 me. Ooh, she gave me a headache. Soon as she opened up my mouth, I said, I said she said, oh, you got a headache? I said, yeah, just that instant. <laughs> <laughs> she, look what she told me. She said, am I talking too much? I said, yes. <laughs> That's the thing about, you know, I just was, I, you know, Lauren said, you need to stop that. You, whatever comes out, it just comes out. I said, well, I'm telling the truth. The lady gave me a headache. I was fine talking with her till she opened up her mouth. <laughs> when she opened up her mouth and when she went to talking that garbage and probably, she know this here, she know for a fact this here, and it's got to be this and it's got to be that, and she right and uh, uh, instant. I said, Yahweh, you know, you, I got to move myself now. You know I got to move myself. So I just politely told her, though, I said, you know what? You know, that's why I tell Lord, I said, you know, they said, Miss Dora, I ain't seen you. I said, baby, I can't deal with y'all. I got that arm on, but I can't deal with y'all. Because, you know, I would be crazy, too. It's <laughs> insane. You know, people just, you know, they, they me, 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 and they grabbing everything, and it always them, you know, is, 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 I say no, mm -mm. I say, and then I look at the, the young people the, today, you know, they're just having kids and having kids and just don't know what, what's going on in this world. Just keep having kids and having kids and having kids, and they're laughing like it's so good. What you bringing them here for? You're not going to teach them anything, because you don't even know nothing. You know, and you're bringing all these kids into the world, into this, this hell hole that they don't know what's going on, you know what I mean? And they, and they think they got it all, you know, materialistic stuff, that's all they're grabbing for. It's nothing. To, I say, do y'all think about anything else? Y'all so, you know, you know what's going to happen to these kids if something happened to y'all, you know what I mean? Where you think they go go at? The system is not excellent at all. When you when you, when 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 a child lose their parent, you know what I mean. But we already know where our parent, he's always with us. He's always with us. You know, our parents always with us. You know what I mean. And that's what keep us going. You know what I mean. We don't have to worry about that. You know what I mean. I have to. You know, that armor. I have to keep it on. Twenty four seven. Don't take it off. Sleep with it and everything because cause he 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 bothering with you when you're sleeping. You know what I mean? He trying to get you to do all kind of stuff and you know and, and everything and have all these thoughts, you know, and concept and opinion and it ain't about you, you know. So we just need to be stay grounded in what Yahweh has get, given us, you know, and that's some stability. That's something that that's love. This ain't nothing but some love. This ain't nothing but some love, and that's what we need, you know what I mean? We don't need all that other stuff. It's, it's, it's not worth the time, you know, and I can't go through it. I can't go through it, you know, I can't go through it, you know. I, I want that peace and joy, and I'm going to keep it to that promise. He promised it to me. He promised it to me. A gift. I want my gift. I want my gift. I don't, I want my gift. And I will be here every day. I keep him with me. I be running trying to get here. This is, just to, you know, to sit with the brother, you know, with some love, you know, and not all that foolishness that the world wants to give you out there. You know, you got to hit it. You got to do this. You got to do this. All that works. I'm tired of working. That's why I retire. You know, I ain't getting paid from that. You know, so my reward is not physical. My reward is spiritual, you know. So that's what I want. I want that spiritual reward, you know. I want. I want to. I want to glorify with Him, be one with Him, and the only way we could do that is, 
You know, just come to class, pay attention, get all we could get, and more. You know what I mean? It's, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's all in measure, what he wants to give us. You know, you know just like he says, it's teachers, it's lawyers, it's this and that. You know, we all have a gift, but it's a gift from Yahweh. Straight from the creator himself, you know, and we don't need to worry about what this one got or what that one got. You know, Yahweh give us something individual. It's a, it's a marriage, it's individual. But we all come collective as one into that body. But he gives us individual gifts. And then he brings us right back to him. You know what I mean? We got to just know where it's coming from. You know what I mean? And you don't have to be an expert in to know what's going on to run these charts. You just got to know what Yahweh has given you. And to understand that he has given you when you can see his purpose. When you can see his plan and operation. Because it's going to overturn and it's going to overturn. Regardless of what. You know what I mean? Regardless of what. You know what I mean? It, you know, it, it just... See Hebrew? See that Roman? Roman Hebrew? Oh, man. <laughs> Romans 8 and 1. I'm telling you, we, we you know, mm -mm. No, we, we, need, we need to be known. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the Messiah. Okay, we don't have to worry, people. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yep, that's good. That's, a, that's where we at. There is now no condemnation. So we don't need to have to be worried about what's going on out there because we've already been through all this here. We've been through all this here. We've been through this here, you know. We was already in bondage, darkness before we even came into class. We don't even, you know. But you know what? You can't get off it. Life don't let you get off it. Blood, water, spirit, body. You know, dead, buried, resurrected. You can't get off it. You can't get off it. And anybody that say that you can, you can't. So we just need to know that Yahweh has, has, has given us what we need, and we need to accept that and be very thankful and grateful for whatever he has given us. You know, because you, know, you know what? I ask for a whole lot. But he only gave it to me in measure. You know? I, I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do this. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. 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 It may come, but guess what? It's going to come in his time. Not, you know, you just got to wait for it. You know what I mean? You know, and we all been blessed with, with enough knowledge that we are still here in love. You know what I mean? And, you know, the increase will come. It's every day. We get that increase in something. You know what I mean? He, he give us a, 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 a revelation of, of every day. Every day. He, give, he gives us a revelation. I don't care what it is. The littlest thing, he give us a revelation in it. You know, I'd be, I'd be saying, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I told Lawrence. I told Lawrence, I said, you know, during the years that I have been traveling back and forth with my husband and with Lawrence and with myself, just think of how much I didn't learn about the physical body that I didn't even know about. You know, Mr. Forrest went through some stuff. We was all there. Mr. Forrest went through. Whew. And I was there every step of the way from the beginning till the end. You know what I mean? Though, you know, and that's the thing about me. I ask questions. I don't let no doctor, nobody tell me anything without asking questions. I want, I want proof. I've been like that, you know. I'm not a medicine-taking person, so I, you know, you, uh -huh, what that going to do? Then when I see all the side effects, I say, mm-mm, mm-mm. And I always say, well, what y'all were giving me, I'm going to bring back with him. Bring back to him, you know what I mean? My mother was like that, you know. I ain't all that cutting in the hospital and everything, you know what I mean? I ain't for that, you know what I mean? You know, you, you know the doctor got mad because I wouldn't talk to him with Lawrence. I say, I say, look, sir, I can't sit in this little cubicle so big, you know. I have a disease. <laughs> <laughs> closed in, you know what I mean? So he said, well, every time I need to ask you something, I got to come out to the waiting room. I said, well, you just have to walk. Because <laughs> I'm not going to sit in here. Because I can't do it, you know what I mean? Look, no, you know, and the, you know, the smell, you know, 
I said, mm mm, you know. So he, he kept coming. He said, well, well, your brother wants you back. I said, my brother already know my ways. My brother didn't tell you to come get me. Because my brother already know I'm not coming back here. Now I'm going to bring him back here and make sure he's comfortable. But I'm not going to stay back here. Whilst he go to surgery and just sit in this room in this little box, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? I have to be in an open space, you know. I might want to run. I don't know. <laughs> you know, so, you know, he, he, you know, he, he thought it was, huh? He thought I was not concerned about my brother because I wouldn't sit back there. Okay, well, he's going to leave. You're going to prep him. I don't need to be back here, right? No. You're going to bring him straight to the thing, and then you're going to bring him back. I'll be back when he come back. I'll come and visit him, you know, and see how he's doing, you know, and check on him, you know, and just wait till his recovery is over, and then we'll leave. And that's what happened. But they were trying to get me back. I said, you know what? People impose things on you that you that you should do, that you don't want to do, you know. And, you, you know, and he seen that I was getting aggravated. He said, are you getting aggravated? I said, no, I'm not. But I was. I say, forgive that lie, but yeah, I was, you know, but I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to say it to him. But I'm just saying, you know, you know, that's how people are with you, you know. They try to impose things on you, which, you know, it, it, it's not good, you know what I mean? And, and, and then it, they get an attitude with you, you know. That's how my family was when I started, you know, everybody going to church and hear Dora going to IDMR, you know what I mean? What is that? Then when I broke the name down to them, they still didn't understand, you know. I said, well, what purpose of me telling you and you still, you know, look up those words, you know. You know, they, all of them, that, that, all of them have meaning to them. Just look them up, you know, and you put them together, you, you know, metaphysical research, you know. You, well, come on, come on, get it together, you know. But, you know, they still don't understand me now, you know what I mean. When I go back home, they try to get me to go to church. I said, girl, I'm not even sitting foot in their church. With all that hollering and everything, you know what I mean? I done been through all that, you know, and I don't think, you know, you know, I have to be, you know, brought back to all that, you know. I don't need that remembrance, you know. Don't bring me back to that because it's, it's buried in there anyway. Because there wasn't no truth to it from the beginning, you know what I mean? So when you have the truth, that's what you need to stand on. You don't stand on no lie. The church ain't got nothing but lies going on. That's his place. He is what? The liar. You know, he will have you in a bad delusion. And I was already in that delusion. And it had me, you know, all bottled up. So, you know, I don't want to be that way no more. You know what I mean? So my prayer always to Yahweh that he keeps me. Even when I'm stumbling and falling, he keeps me. You know what I mean? All the mistakes I made, he don't judge me. Humans judge. Humans judge. I don't care whatever you do or say, they judge you. You know what I mean? No compassion. You know, they're always trying to see what they could stab at you. You know what I mean? They bring the littlest thing to you, you know, that, that don't even make sense sometimes. You know what I mean? It just, they, they just have something to say. You know what I mean? Like they can't keep silent. You know what I mean? So, you know, we just, you know, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. But in that body of Yahshua. And if I'm the only one in there, so be it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So be it. You know what I mean? But that's where I stand at. You know what I mean? Children and nothing. I love them all. But guess what? They can't save my soul. You know? And they will do that. You know? They will try to convince you. Hey, come on, go back to church and all that. Okay. Okay. And what I'm going to do? Just sit up there and look crazy? No, I'm not. You know what I mean? No participant? No. You know, so, you know, you, you know just let Yahweh, you know, fight our battle. He, he guides our footsteps and everything. You know what I mean? So, you know what? Just hold a brother up. You know, no judgment. Because who are we to judge? Because we are being judged. You know what I mean? So, you know, don't throw it out there. You know, we are not... We have to live in this world, but we are not of this world. We have to live in it. We have to tolerate the things that this world presents to us. You know what I mean? It, it, it's hard to walk away from some of it. I understand that. Because I have a big problem with that, and I ask y'all way to, you know, work on me with that, you know, because I'm ready to... I be focused this way, and then when something happens, you know, I get to peeping. 
see what direction I'm going in. And he trying to say, no, stay focused. And then all of a sudden, something be saying, do my thing. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's not good. Then, but he knows me. You know, he know my intent. He know my heart. You know what I mean? So, you know, that just hold a brother up and always remember that, you know, Yahweh has our back. We need that armor. We wear it 24-7. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. Well, you can't take it off because once that spirit is in you, it's there. It's there. In truth and in love, it's there. So, you know, we need to know who our true parents are. You know what I mean? We need to know who our true parents are, you know what I mean? And then we can stand on that, you know what I mean? Physical parents, love them, gone. But an everlasting parent, hmm, whew, that's the joy, you know what I mean? I want that peace and joy, you know? And with those three words, I say hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. Dr. Latara Burley. Thank you. Uh, I grabbed my Bible. Sorry. Good afternoon. Oh, it is a pleasure to be standing here before you and have anything to say of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and, um, I just enjoy class. I enjoy, I enjoy coming to class. I enjoy learning, mm -hmm. you know, the things that, you know, he has given us, but me, you know, so it's just so much more every time we come to class. Mm -hmm. You're always learning something new, and it's, it doesn't matter. Even, not even in class, just out in the world, Yahweh is still revealing things even if we're not in class, you know, you can be looking at something or just out, you know, taking a walk or something and Yahweh will still just reveal just out of nowhere, you know. And um, I just I don't really I really haven't. It's been a few things <laughs> that Yahweh has just been showing me and just revealing so much. And only thing I can just say is just I'm just so grateful that. It's just so much more than what I have previously been understanding about God is before I came to class. And that is, is, is showing how he has grace and his mercy because, like you were saying, um, we were down here in Egypt. And so we were in that bondage. We were in that state and condition of not knowing Yahweh. And that's the bondage that we were in out there in the world. But, you know, all of us are in class now. And so that is a testimony unto ourselves and to everywhere, everyone else. Also, how that Yahweh has brought us out of that state and condition. So if you are in class, you know, just think about it. Where would you be even if you were raised in class if when you were a child you didn't know all of these things until Yahweh had revealed these things to you so I just want to say that you know it's, it's just so much that we can be thankful for and grateful for Yahweh pulling us out of that state and condition but um, let's go to the scripture reader and let's just uh, start at oh my goodness I've just been I've been reading Colossians, it's a lot in here, and um, it's just a few things that stand out to me. I can't really, you know, go over everything, but if you go to the scripture reading, and let's just start at, um, I guess just start at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then I'll interrupt. Okay. Colossians, second chapter. For I would that you knew what great confidence Sorry. I have for you, and for them, and lay a Laodicea, mm -hmm. and for as, and far as many as have been wrong as uh, as 
have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be conformed, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. So we, so you're saying that um, that their hearts, he's writing a letter saying that their hearts be knit together in love and in all riches and the full assurance of understanding. Keep, keep going. Okay. A full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of Elohim and of the Father and of the Messiah in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the, in, the, in the Yahshua is hid all the, tre all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And that's, it's only in Yahshua. There's no other God. There's no other name. This is the only name that is here, all the mystery and the treasure, and you can't get outside of that, <laughs> you know. Keep going. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. And that's, that's what, um, coming down here in class, I have learned that you can't just go about what, Everybody is saying we did that. Out, well, I did that out there in the church world, and y'all was always bringing that to my memory. Just listen, mm -hmm. sit down, be still, and listen. And and I've learned the importance of really, really listening. And it's a hard thing for people to hear. Yeah. It really is because yeah. some people they'll hear things, but they'll they will listen only to respond. They don't listen to try to understand. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing that Yahweh has given us. And even in the scriptures, he, he's always saying, hear, O Israel. He's always saying that. So it is important for us to really, really listen and to pay, even not until the speakers on the floor, but to what Yahweh in your, in your, mem in your spirit has, is, is telling you, that little small voice. That's that conscious. That is what he is, is trying to get you conscious of and to understand something about him. Just listen and hear. Keep going. Joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in, my, in the Messiah. As ye have therefore received Yahshua the Messiah, the Savior, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, through philosophy and vain deceit. And vain deceit. After the tradition of men. And we know the church, it, not even just the church, everything is set up after a tradition of man. Our whole upbringing, our whole thoughts, our theories, the concepts is nothing but the man's tradition. It has nothing to do with Yahweh. It has nothing to do with anything but materialistic stuff. And that is what Yahweh is, is telling us to bring, to get from that, come from out of that philosophy and let no man spoil you of that. Don't let them come back and tell you, oh, um, you have to be baptized, and we did that before in the church world. You can't come back and say, oh, you need um, to pay tithes or anything physical. You, we don't do that. He's nailed that to the cross. We, we don't continue on those traditions of men. And, and some people, if you try to you know, talk to them, they'll say, well, I've been raised up this way. I'm used to it. You know, I'm older. I can't change now. Well, that's a tradition. That's not what... Yah, thus saith Yahweh. Yahweh said that, get me, uh, uh, what is that, John 4 and 24. John 4 and 24. Yahweh is spirit. Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him. They that worship Yahweh. Must. If you're going to worship Yahweh, you must. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, that just eradicates everything, the traditions of man. You must <coughs> worship him in spirit and in truth. But then you have to find out what is spirit. How do, can you worship him in spirit? And how can you worship him in truth? Because Yahweh is not a liar. He can't lie. So it has to be, you have to 
understand you have to research these things to find out if it's the truth or not because if it's not the truth then you're not worshiping him in spirit and truth you you it's a lie and yahweh is not a liar keep going um go back to the scripture reading okay and just pick up keep going because there's so much in here this whole chapter of colossians there's so much in here after i'm still in a after the rudiments of the world and not after Yahshua, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature. For in him dwe- in Yahshua dwell the fullness of the supernal nature. Bodily. In the body. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh mm-hmm. by the circumcision, circumcision of Yahshua. Mm-hmm. Buried with him in baptism. So we're buried in him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him. We are dead in Yahshua. We are buried with him in, Yah- in baptism. Mm-hmm. And we are raising him. So that's the gospel right there. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is the gospel. Mm-hmm. Yahshua. That is the gospel. There's no other gospel out there. We are. They always talking about um, he died on the and and, and um, he buried and he rose on the third day. But how can they explain he died and buried and rose on the third day? Here we have. He has given us all the witnesses, going back to Moses, how he died, buried, and rose on the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel, and it is about Yahshua. So anything that we are talking about, even here on these charts. Um, the ages and dispensation, you can put that to the pattern. You can you can put the, the um, days of the creation, anything that's um, the the seasons, everything. You have a death, burial, resurrection. Mm-hmm. How a child is born, you have a death, burial, resurrection. It's so much. The, the electrons, the neutrons, the protons. If he is the pattern, he is what Moses, he gave Moses and, and transformed right here in the mount. And this is a, 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 a anthropomorphic being that he manifested in a moderation. They say he manifested in a physical body down here as Joshua the Messiah. Well, he is in the flesh. He is this. He is the pattern. He is everything in the whole creation. That is the gospel. That is what we come down here and we study. We study this and we learn this. And that is, um, what is that? John 17 and 3 says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee. And get, for the, get, for me, um, get that and then get the definition of know. Because I didn't even know <laughs> what know means. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a lot and just in that word. And I didn't even want to go John over there, but that's where y'all got me going. <laughs> And this is life eternal. And he said, and this is life eternal. That they might know. That they thee, might know thee. The only true Elohim. The only true Elohim. And Yahshua the Messiah. The only true Elohim. The, the word or son. We have it right here. Elohim, the word or son. And Yahshua the Messiah. Whom thou hast sent. Whom Yahweh, he come in his father's name, Yahweh has sent. Get for me, before you get from that, get for me uh, Matthew 1 and 26, I believe. Mm-hmm. Matthew 1 and 21, do you, maybe? Is it one? Yeah. What, the I 1 mean. and 26, I think it is, or 1 and 25. Matthew 1 and 20. One and twenty-one, and she shall bring forth. Yeah, one and twenty-one. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew one and twenty-one, and she shall bring forth a son. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yahshua. And he shall call his name Yahshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. So he shall save his people. So right there is is declaring what Yahshua's mm-hmm. purpose is. Mm-hmm. Is saving his people from his sins, meaning salvation. If you come in his father's main name, Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. Mm-hmm. You have the definition of um, no. Um, yes. No. Uh, and Yahshua said, "This is life eternal is to know." To have a clear perception and or understanding of or oh, man, <laughs> of <laughs> sure. Be sure. Be sure or well informed about. Drops off. Um, 
or well informed. Mm -hmm. Be aware or cognizant. Be aware of. Okay. Have perceived or learned to have a firm mental grasp. Firm mental grasp. Have I think I spelled that wrong. <laughs> have securely in the memory to have a to have sexual intercourse with. To have sexual intercourse with. That was the one that stood out with me. So when we are learning of our Heavenly Father, and you think it is not, okay, physical, okay. Um, when Adam knew his wife, he said when she conceived, every time he said she conceived, he said, and he knew his wife, and then she conceived. And... Um, when we come down here, we are learning, but we are becoming one with our Heavenly Father. We are conscious of that. That's why here in the, um, where is it? When, when Adam transgressed and, and he was um, kicked out of this garden, he didn't have that, that um, intercourse with Yahweh anymore. He was cut off. So when we come down here, we are learning. And he said, this is life eternal to know him. So we are becoming one with our creator. And it's, it's just, just learning these things and not knowing, not knowing, <laughs> but then coming down here and knowing and finding out just what these things mean. You have to look these things up. He said to prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. It's just so much that he that we can just keep going on and on about. And this is the gospel. This is what we are going to continue to learn through the ages and, and, and times. And I didn't want to go this. I don't even know why I'm going this way. But <laughs> it's just to, to have a knowledge and know it, it, it has. What is that? Where is that? Somewhere here. Okay, knowledge. That is one of the attributes. Know. And then you have knowledge of Yahweh of your creator and that's what we want to take on we want to take on these attributes and take on his his uh spirit we want to 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 like Lidora was saying just get being circumcised being cut out all of these physical thoughts and 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 concepts and opinions what we've been raised up on and steep just like the children of israel was steep down here in this darkness and not even knowing that Darkness just surrounded all around you. And that's just the mental state that we were in before coming into class. But being circumcised, like in the scripture reader was saying, being circumcised without um, the circumcision made without hands. You see, and, and this is not a, a, a fleshy circumcision like he, like Abraham had to do. It, it is the, the circumcision of your head, cutting out all of that carnality, cutting out all of this um God lives above the sun, moon, and stars, and he's looking down at everybody and seeing who's good and who's bad and stay seeing the world and, oh, I can't do anything about it. I'm just going to let, you know, I have no control over this. Mm -hmm. Yahweh has control over everything. Mm -hmm. He's, he's not just looking back and saying, oh, well, just let them destroy themselves. I have no control. I don't know what are they doing. He's going to know what you're going to do before you even do it because he put it in you to do it. Mm -hmm. He knew we was going to come down here in these classes because he told us to come down here. <laughs> you know, we couldn't come down here unless Yahweh invited us and told us to come down here. Tara, stay out of church. Tara, don't go to church no more. Tara, don't pay no more tithes. And then when I didn't pay tithes, I got a phone call from the church and say, hi, I, we haven't seen you in a while. Really? <laughs> As soon as as soon as he told me to stop going to church no more, guess what? I found out about the name and I was invited to a class in Orlando. That was my first um, class going into, and I found out about Yahweh and he brought me right down here. And one of these classes, like I said, was on the same street that I was raised in a church that I was raised in. The same street since I was 12 years old, on the same street, right up the street, as a matter of fact. But I could not be invited unless Yahweh told me to come down here. So it, it's just showing you how, how 
merciful and how it, it, it takes a divine intervention for us to even understand any of these things. It is not us of our own. It is Joshua in us. And we have to have faith in that it is Joshua in us that is revealing all of these things. But yes, Joshua be in you. You will understand none of this. Period. Unless Joshua be in you, how can you understand any of this? That's just the way it is. Keep um, going on the um, reading on the scripture reading. Colossians 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Mm -hmm. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahshua the Messiah. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature. I think I read it. Yeah. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with that circumcision made without hands, mm -hmm. and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision. Keep, go, just drop down to 60, I'm sorry. Okay. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day mm -hmm. or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. And that is well, one of the, the carnal ordinances mm -hmm. that they have us, that they had us um, under. I don't know about you guys, but we had to do it every first Sunday. Um, we had to take the communion and, and we had to wash feet. And um, what else we had to do? We had to kneel. And every time they said something, you get back up and you kneel down. And these are carnal ordinances. And don't drink, don't smoke, don't eat this, and don't eat that. It says, let no man judge you. Keep going. In meat or in drink. Mm -hmm. Or in respect of a holy day. Or the new moon. Or of the Sabbath day. And you were damned if you did if you missed church on the Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You had to make church. You had to be there on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which are a shadow of things to come. Mm -hmm. But the body is of the Messiah. Let no man beguile you of your reward mm -hmm. in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Worshiping of angels. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Mm -hmm. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Mm -hmm. And not holding the head from which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together. Vainy puffed up in his fleshly minds. Get for me Romans and go to the, um, I think the, was it, one where it's talking about um, the carnal mind is at enmity against mm -hmm. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Is that in the first chapter of Romans, I believe? Mm -hmm. The Romans eight. Romans eight. What it says to be kindly minded is death. Six. Yeah. Romans eight and six. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh. The carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh. So anything that we do basically in this flesh, it is not of Yahweh. Because flesh, well, my goodness, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. It says, and I don't know what scripture it is, but we cannot inherit it. So we have to take, we have to put off this body. We have to put on everything that we do physically because we're not going a, a human, a black person, a white person is not going to be in heaven. It's not going to be this type of body that we're going to have. We're going to have a spiritual body. It's, we're going to be changed. It's not going to be like here on earth. So we don't have to go every day. We have to get up, brush our teeth, wash our face, go to work, put buy shoes, you know, feed this body, you know, every day. That is, that's work, feeding it every day because you got to work to feed your body, you know, and that's a, that's a work within itself. But with Yahweh, it's not going to be so. That's not how it is in the spirit. He, he's, and it's not, oh, we're going to be um, walking on what they tell you, gold streets and, and paved and all that and going to be partying. No, these are, this is where we're going to dwell. 
right within him in, in wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, foundation, power, and strength, justice. It's, it's, it's peace, joy, and happiness in Yahshua, in the Messiah. Go back, um, go back to the scripture reader, where were we at, and pick up from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just pick up this end. And knit together increaseth with the increase of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, if ye be dead with the Messiah from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinance? If we are dead in the Messiah, in Yahshua, if he came and nailed all of that to the cross, yeah. read that again. Why, as thou living in the world? Why are we living in the world? Are you subject? Are we subject to, ordinances? to these ordinances? If he knelt these to the cross, if he, if, if these are no more, right here it says knelt to the cross, and over here it's, it's not the same as the spiritual kingdom. That's Jeremiah thirty-one and thirty-one. Keep going. Touch not. Touch not. Taste not. Taste not. Handle not. Handle not. Which all are to perish with the using. So that's the body. Everything we, we do with our physical body, we touching, we tasting, we seeing, all of that is going to perish mm -hmm. with the using. Yeah. Keep going. After the commandments and doctrines of men. After the commandments and doctrines of men, like I say, it's a tradition, mm -hmm. doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship mm -hmm. and humility. Mm -hmm. And neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. And they and, and they'll they'll tell you that this is your righteousness. Mm -hmm. If you come and you bend down and you're humble, if you get on your knees and you, you do the crossing and you take the communion, that is a, a openly worshiping. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm righteous. Oh, I'm I'm saved. You know, if you do these things, that is keep read that again. Which things have indeed a show, a of show of worship, and will worship, and will worship, and humility, mm -hmm. and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Not in Peace. any honor. Keep going. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, right here, um, where I was reading a transcript of Dr. Kenley, and it's, it was. Um, Janet, she printed out this and gave us this, and it says the gospel, Matthew 24. And um, I just want you to read where I have the marks here. He was talking about what the gospel is and what Yahshua had came down to do. And, cause, you know, we have to understand this is the gospel. But we have to all, all understand what is the gospel. It's the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. But not only that is more to that but it's it's just adding on to what we've already learned go where we have where well, i have this mark here and then where i have the marks just mm -hmm. read from there right. and then i have this my is seat. A reader here dr harris and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations mm -hmm. dr kenley Dr. Harris, before we get started, back up a little, please, so we can see what, get the subject and the predicate. Mm -hmm. Dr. Harris, and Yahweh went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming mm -hmm. and of the end of the age? Dr. Kim. So there they didn't have an understanding, but he's mm -hmm. saying, Tell us a sign. This was before Pentecost. Mm -hmm. um, keep reading. Now, do you see that now? Now do you understand what we're talking about? It's we're a lot in there. It's a lot yeah. in that transcript, but I'm just trying to chop up just to bring out a few points in there. We're talking about the sign of the coming of the end of the age. Now that's what we're talking about. Now this is he talking to his disciples. Mm -hmm. And so now skip on down to 14 and 15 verses. Dr. Mm -hmm. Harris and the gospel. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And this gospel, which is Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. Yahshua shall be preached to the witness in all the world for a witness for all the nations. 
Um, Dr. Kinley skips on down. Yeah, now, skip down. it says this gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom. Now, I want to show you what the kingdom is so you can decide whether or not that your pastor is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So we have to, <laughs> he's going to tell us what the gospel is so we can decide whether our pastor or anybody else mm -hmm. is not preaching that. Now, Jehovah Witnesses are saying that God is going to set up a kingdom on this earth plane. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to descend and rule and reign for a thousand years. And you heard me say when a man was here that said that God had sent him to set up the kingdom, mm -hmm. I said it wasn't so. He jumped up and said I was a liar right back there. Dr. Kinley again. The Apostle Paul said, Prove all things. Prove and all things. And hold fast. And hold to fast. That which is good. To that which is good. All so right. anything that we come down here and we learn, we, we, we prove it. It's not just speaking from um, anybody's thoughts or, or, you know, concepts or whatever. We're, we're proving things. We're proving how that Yahweh is the father, how um, Yahshua is the son, and how he comes in his father. And everything that Yahweh has given us, he's always saying, prove it. He always have witnesses for it. Keep All reading. All right, now let's see about the kingdom. First Colossians, Colossians 1.13. And I was reading that with <laughs> the scripture reader went into, but the first Colossians, second and third, just the whole thing, you have to read it. One twelve and 13. Mm-hmm. Dr. Harris, Colossians first chapter started the 12th verse, giving thanks unto the Father. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kinley, of the sons, listen now, enlightened. We're not talking about someone walking in darkness out there like the Methodist, the Baptist, right. the Roman. That's right. not what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about the sons of Yahweh. The sons of Yahweh. We're not talking about Satan. We're not talking about priests. Is that clear to you? We're talking about the sons in light, not Christians. All right, the sons in light. All right, read on. And when he makes a point, he, he always saying, is that clear? Or are you listening? Or I want you to know this. Keep reading. Reader, who hath delivered us, Dr. Kinley? Now, who hath delivered us? Who hath delivered us? Now, hath is past tense. Hath is past it's tense. Already happened. It's already happened. Not something that's gonna, something that's already happened. So we don't have to wait till we die right. for all of this because it's been already predestined from the yeah. foundation yeah. of the world. Yeah. Yahshua is just not salvation. We just not coming to a knowledge to understand who he is. Yeah. He was salvation way back there in the angelic um, age for, with the when he cast out satan and his demons and they said now it's come salvation right. he's always been that who hath that's past tense who hath delivered us from what reader from the power of darkness dr kinley from the power of darkness superstition superstition and ignorance, and ignorance. delivers these sons that have been enlightened by the holy spirit am i making the thing clear and Right there. <laughs> Am I making the thing clear? So um, I don't know if I, I don't have anything else marked enough, but he has he's already predestined us to even be down here to even be learning. So you have to have faith in that. He is saving your soul. He is salvation. And hold on to that, because without the Holy Spirit within you, how would you even know? Did you come down here on your own? No, Yahweh has brought you down here. So it, that within itself, that is salvation because you can't be out there. It's Sunday in the church learning about Lord God and Jesus, but you're not. You're down here in these classes. So that is salvation. And that is what eternal life is, is coming down here and knowing and learning of your creator, how he really is and actually is this. And um, I have no other you know, words to say, but just to know, know that word that Yahweh is salvation. And with that, um, I'll say hallelujah. hallelujah. And our next speaker will be the Dean of our branch, Dr. Joel Turner. I've really enjoyed the uh, previous speakers, and 
There's only 12 minutes left, so this will be brief. Um, let's go back over the scripture reading. And um, pick it up about the circumcision, please. Colossians 2 and 11. Mm -hmm. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Okay, so we are circumcised with, with see, see, here's the thing that the people don't work, uh, understand. When they read that New Testament, they hear all these words that are familiar to them, like circumcision, like baptisms, and stuff like that. And when they read them, they think it's confirming what was given back here with this old covenant. What they don't understand is, is that everything has changed. That this old covenant was carnal, natural, physical, earthly, and it was, most of all, it was temporary. It was never made to be permanent. Okay? So all this stuff was fulfilled, and we know what the word fulfill means, okay? Where Yahshua says, I came not to destroy it, but to fulfill it. And fulfill means to finish, to go complete, to bring it to an end, okay? Now, the thing about it is, is, is that this old covenant was setting up principles and was an allegory, it was a metaphor of what was going to occur afterwards, that there would be a new covenant, okay? Now, the new covenant would not be like the old covenant. And here's the main difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant was, like I said, physical, natural, you see, carnal. The new covenant was spiritual. Now, there are words that are called antonyms. Okay, words that mean the opposite. The complete opposite by Yahweh's dictionary. Okay, forget what Webster says. See, Dr. Kinley said we correct the, the dictionaries all the time. The complete opposite to physical or natural is spiritual. Okay, there's nothing that can be more uh, uh, antonymish. Okay? Making up words. Hey, D Dr. Kinley did that too. All right, so, so look at so back here, okay, the first one, and, and Tara mentioned this, the first one that was circumcised was Abraham, right? Okay, now the thing of it is, and, and this is a whole other train of thought, the covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham was given before he was even physically circumcised. That's right. And that it was a covenant of faith, right. which is, because you have to have a type of the new covenant back here for Yahshua to, to bring in a new covenant, right. all right? So, so that was begun there uh, 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 with, with Abraham and all his descendants through both Isaac and Ishmael. And now, the, the Arabs came from Ishmael. The Arabs to this day are circumcised, and all the Jews are too. And frankly, most of the Christians are on top of that. But you see, it was then passed down, okay, and that circumcision. Now, there was a period of time where they were in this wilderness of Sinai. Okay, and you can pick it up. I think it's uh, Joshua 5 and 5. Okay, where when they came up out of here before they could go into Canaan's land, they had to be circumcised. Now, Canaan's land is a type of that promised land, or it's a type of that new covenant. Okay, did I get that right? Yeah, get that for me, please. Okay, 5 and 2. Joshua 5 and 2. Uh huh. At that time, Yahweh said unto Joshua, Make these now, now, we had a class recently where, uh, and I don't know who all was here at that time, but, but uh, where Tara got up and she did a beautiful job showing how that Joshua was Yahshua. That the same one that was on that cross was back here in a physical body leading the children of Israel. Now, Moses, he couldn't take them over because he had sinned. Yahshua had to be the one to take them over into that land of uh, that Canaan's land. Okay. Now, before he could do that, this Yahshua had to circumcise them. It's, it's actually Yahoshua, which means that Yahweh will be salvation. 
Okay, go ahead. At that time, Yahweh said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives uh -huh. and circumcise again. Again? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, circumcising, folks, is literally cutting off a body part. Right. right. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you cut off your finger, does it grow back? You can't circumcise someone a second time. Once it's done, it's gone. It's, it, you see what, it's, see what I'm saying? But you see, now Dr. Kinley explained that. He said that Yahshua, being among them, made them in principle circumcised. That in, or in, other, in, other, in other words, that's a type of the new covenant. That Yahshua is the one that makes us circumcised from a spiritual standpoint. Okay, so they were in principle circumcised. Now, this is in a transcript. They were in principle circumcised while he was walking there among them. So that when they came up into that promised land, before they could receive that promised land, which is like into that new covenant, they had to be circumcised. Okay, again. Now, a person can be circumcised from a natural standpoint. Under this covenant, that doesn't mean anything to Yahweh. The circumcision that's going on now is the circumcision that's talking about in Colossians. And that's the circumcision of the heart and of the mind. Okay, now, there, there's other examples too. Um, <clears throat> all right, I want to get to a point though about this, uh, uh, kind of a cool principle that I read. Okay, so that we have a circumcision without hands. Okay, Jeremiah uh, uh, 4 and 4, please, and Deuteronomy 10 and 16. Okay, and now this is a foreshadowing of that new new covenant. Okay, read uh, uh, with ex in Exodus first, please. Exodus, what did you want? Exodus four and sixteen. Oh, you said Jeremiah. Okay. Yeah, I want Jeremiah four and four and Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, ten and sixteen. My, my mistake. Deuteronomy ten and six. Sixteen. Therefore, now this is Moses. He had gone up here. He had a vision and revelation from Yahweh Elohim. When he came, he, and he was actually was able, was allowed to see the back parts of Yahweh Elohim. When he came down, he was so changed that he glowed. Okay? Probably freaked these people out big time. They, as a matter of fact, it did. Okay? They couldn't stand it. He had to put a veil over his face. See, because their hearts and their minds were not circumcised. Okay, now he's seeing all this stuff, and, 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 he, and, and he's saying, read it again, please. Circumcised, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. Now he knew that the, the, the foreskin, as far as their body, didn't do it. That they needed the foreskin of their heart to be circumcised. Okay, that's the real circumcision that's now down under this covenant. But you have a foreshadowing of it with Moses. Now, please read in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. Circumcise yourselves to Yahweh and take away the foreskins of your heart. See, that foreskin of your heart. Okay. Now, look at You have another principle going on here, too. Okay. And that principle, and I want to get this last scripture. And, and um, oh, there's two more. There's, there's another scripture in Ephesians where it talks about that the Holy Spirit will break down that middle wall of partition between us and Yahweh. And that's a circumcision. That you see, these people out here in your church, they got a wall up. Okay? See, Donald Trump wants to build a wall. Okay? Well, there's already a wall. Okay? And that is that they can't see through, through the flesh. They can't see through to see spiritual uh, principles. Okay? Now, uh, 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 what I want to get to is I want to get to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, okay? And now what happened was, okay, when Yahshua died, and, and I'm just cutting this up, when Yahshua died, it says in Matthew that when he gave up that ghost, okay, it said that the veil in the temple, okay, you see how we have it like, like nice here, but it, it covered this. And here it's all raggedy. See, th that veil was rent in twain. That was a spiritual circumcision that went on when that Holy Spirit was poured out. That veil was rent in twain so that the way unto Yahweh, you see, or the way unto Yahshua or Yahweh Elohim was now made available. But that veil had to be rent in twain. Or in other words, there had to be a circumcision. Now the circumcision, 
is, is on the head of the penis. Is that right? So that circum now now we think about we think our hearts here our hearts here, okay our heart and our mind see those are synonymous okay and that circum that 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 heart has to be changed and that veil of the flesh has to be removed so that you can see unto Yahweh that you can see okay and 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 and, and look okay I'm out of time but okay one interesting thing. I read this recently, okay, that they found that men that were circumcised had a very strong uh, 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 statistical immunity to, to getting the AIDS virus. Now, the AIDS virus, folks, is, is essentially the plague of our time, okay, that and cancer, okay, that... See, if you are spiritually circumcised, you are uh, uh, made immune to spiritual AIDS. Okay? Now, if you want to find out what spiritual AIDS is, well, we got, well we'll have to come back. <laughs> so I don't want to go over time. I want to be obedient. So thank you for the time. I really enjoyed everybody else. And, and uh, thank you. Just a reminder, everybody, it's the end of the month. If you have donations, please see Sherry. We hold classes here every Wednesday from 7 to 9 and every Sunday from 11 to 1. Let us all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.